What that number does is multiply the height of the curve. It multiplies the height of the curve. So we are going to sketch 2g of x. This is g of x. This is the original picture. This one's name is g. It doesn't make any difference. Call it f if you prefer. This number out in front multiplies the y, which is the height of the picture. So you are going to simply draw that exact picture, but everything is going to be twice as high. Okay? So, what's that going to look like? It's twice as high. Well, see this little triangle right here? How tall is he right now? Three, two. So twice that would be four. So you're going to draw that same exact triangle in the same exact spot, but it's going to be two times as tall. Nothing moves. Nothing moves. It just stretches. If I want to move something, I have to add or subtract. That's how we move. Nothing is moving, it's just getting stretched. All right, so here's my little semicircle. How tall is he in the original? One. So now he's going to be two times as tall. And then here's my little trapezoid. Now he's underneath, but he's still, what, one? So he's going to go down two. So there it is. That is a picture of 2g of x. So what is a number out in front? A multiplier. When you multiply out in front, what does that do? Multiplies the height. Stretches or shrinks. Leo? Um, on the last point, is that, would we, is that just like a line or is that a point? No, uh, like at the bottom of the trapezoid. No, it could be a um, like, is that supposed to be a point or is that just a straight line? That's just a line. I mean, I don't know what you mean by like that. Like, would I have to put a point there? No. Okay. okay, so now the next one. Now we've done two things here. Now there's a negative and a one half out in front. Now, what does a negative out in front do? We've talked about that one before. The negative turns it upside down. The negative out here turns it upside down. So this picture is going to be turned upside down, which means the triangle is going to be going down and so on. Now, what does the one half do? <coughs> It multiplies the y, but when I multiply by a half, it isn't going to stretch it, it's actually going to shrink it. So how tall is the original triangle? Two. Well, now he's only going to be half as tall, so now he's only going to be one, and he's going to be upside down, right? So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to draw my exact same triangle but he's only one tall now, and he's upside down. He's half what he was. He was two, now he's a half, or now he's one, half of that. Now, this little circle here, he's on top, he's gonna come down because of the negative. Also, how tall is he? One, one but now he's only gonna be 0. 0.5. He's only going to be a half. So there he is, a little tiny semicircle on the bottom because he got turned upside down by the negative and only half because he's half of what he was. All right, now my trapezoid was on the bottom, so now he's going to be on the top. He was, how tall? One. So now he's going to be a half. 
So now I'm going to have this trapezoid that is only a half tall. So this number or this negative turned me upside down because that's what a negative out in front does. And this multiplied my y. So basically cut my y's in half. Okay. Now, here comes the part that's a little bit tricky. The next problem, notice it also has a one half. But what do you notice about that one half? Inside. It's inside. And that makes a difference, doesn't it? Remember, everything we do, where the number is, makes a difference. If it's inside and you're adding, it's left and right. If you're outside and you're adding, it's up and down. Where it's at matters. This number right here divides the x's. It divides the width. Mr. Ford, how am I going to remember this? I don't know, but you have to. You have to remember that a number out in front multiplies the y, the height, and a number on the x divides the x, divides the width. Okay? So let's talk about this for a minute. How wide, now we're dealing with width, so we're looking at how wide. How wide is that triangle? Two. What is 2 divided by a half? I have to divide by that number. What is 2 divided by a half? Isn't that 2 times 2 over 1? 4. So this triangle is now 4 wide. It is still 2 tall. I didn't change that, but it's four wide. This number divides the width. And dividing by a half is multiplying by two. Does that uh, tall point still stay at one? No, it's, it moves over to two. Because everything is twice as far as it was in the beginning. Now, what about our semicircle? How wide is it? Well, it's two originally, now it's going to be four. Now it's still one tall, it's just all stretched out. And I know this goes off your graph paper, I know, it continued on to the next one. And then what about this trapezoid? How wide is he? Well, in the original, he's one, two, three wide. So he's going to be six. Still down one. So there he is. Putting a coefficient on the x divides all of your x distances. So any point you pick on the original, like if you pick that point right there, just randomly pick that point, it's over three and down one. That's that point right there. So now it's gonna be over six and down one. One, two, three, four, five, six and down one, there it is. Every x gets, in this problem, every x gets doubled because you're dividing by a half. This number divides the horizontal. Now look at these. 
me, we have two things going on. It doesn't matter which one you do first. So I think I'll do this one first. I'll do the inside one first. <coughs> and make myself a note. This divides the X. So if you have trouble visualizing this, and some people do, and that's fine, do it point by point. That point isn't going to change. The origin isn't going to change. What are the coordinates of this point in the original picture? Negative 1, comma, 2, right? This is going to divide that x by 3. So where is this point going to become, or going to end up? Negative, no, 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 no. We are dividing the x by 3. So where is this point going to end up? Negative 1 third comma 2. What is this point in the original? Negative 2, 0. Divide the x by 3, and we'll be at negative 2 thirds, comma 0. So there's my triangle. It used to be 2 wide, now it's 2 thirds wide. What's this point? Well, it's 1, 1, but over here it's going to be 1 third 1 because we are dividing the x by 3. This is the point 2, 0, so it's going to be at 2 thirds. So here's my semicircle. Little skinny thing, but that's what you expect, right? because you're dividing it by three. You're making it a third of what it was. It's gonna be real small. All right, this was the point three negative one, so it'll be at one negative one. This was the point four negative one, so it'll be at four thirds. And this was five zero, so it'll be a five thirds. Now, that took care of the three. You divide by this number. Whatever that number is, you divide by it. So you're dividing three divided by No, you're dividing it divide it take whatever the x coordinate is and divide it by three. So one third. Yep. And that's what we plotted right there. One third common one. Is take the x coordinate and divide it by three. And that's the point that you plot. Now, what I do with this? Multiply the y. Multiply the y. So now I've got this skinny little picture, but I have to multiply all of the y's by two. So what's this y? Two, it's going up to four. Oh my gosh. So now I have this skinny, tall, skinny triangle. This semicircle is one. So he's going up to two. Whoops, 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 whoops. And then my trapezoid is going down to two. So let me erase the black so you can clearly see. There is my new picture. Notice it's very tall and very skinny two times as tall and a third as skinny, as wide.
can we do them in like two drafts or did you do yeah, no. The thing is, on a test or quiz, there's only going to be one graph there. So, um, and you get partial credit for showing your work. So, you probably want to get in the habit of doing it on all together if you can. Different colors is great. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's try the next one. I know there's a lot to keep track of, guys. Try the next one. All right, so what are we ready for? Problem E. All right, two things are happening in E. Let's write down what they are. What does this negative right here mean? Where it is. No. That negative doesn't turn the upside down. That negative goes this way, right? So what that means is when you end up drawing this picture, the triangle's gonna be over here, and the circle and trapezoid are gonna be over here. This negative is a cross Y axis. The flip flop across the Y axis. And then what does that two do? divides the x's, right? It divides the x's. So I'm gonna see if I can do this all at once. I'm gonna try to draw this triangle over here on this side, but I have to divide the x's by two, which simply means it's gonna be half as wide as it was, right? So how wide was my original triangle? It was two, so now I'm going to draw the same triangle over here, but it's only going to be one wide because this number divides the width. Two divided by two is one. Now, same thing with my circle, right? Go in there over there because of the negative, and it will only be one. Now, how wide is my trapezoid originally? Three. So now it's going to be one and a half wide. And it's going to be on this side. And it's still down one. And there it is. So we took our original picture. And we flip-flopped it this way because of the negative. So what that means is, triangle is on the right, circle and trapezoid are on the left. Then we made it half as wide because of that two. That two divides the width. So if it was two wide, it will now just be one wide. Let's look at F. Is the size changing in F? No. No. What is the only thing that's changing in F? It's upside down. It's upside down and flip flop. So I would suggest one at a time. I don't care which one you do first. It really doesn't matter. But we have to do both flips here. So this one makes it upside down. And this one flips it across Y. So we're going to flip this way and flip upside down. I'm going to do both. So I'm going to do one at a time. I'm not changing any size. Everything is staying exactly the same. So I'm going to take care of this one first. I don't care which one. It really makes no difference which one you do first. But I'm going to do this negative first. So I'm going to draw my triangle over here, my circle 
and my trapezoid over here. There, that's, I'm not done. All I did was that. Now I'm going to go upside down. So here comes, here comes my trapezoid. There's my circle. And here's my triangle. So the red thing is my final answer. So you can do that in either order. Had to turn it upside down and flip it across the y axis. Anybody have a question about that one? No? Okay. Uh, what's next? Oh my. Okay, this one is going to be way off the paper, so I'm not going to do. Um, I'm not going to do here because it's going to be huge. It'll be way off the Okay, so let's do H. Let's do H real quick. Tell me what's happening. Well, I do draw my picture. Tell me what's happening in, um, oh. There's two of them. Okay, what does this two out here do? Okay, multiply, multiply. This one multiplies the y. Very good. This multiplies the y. Makes it twice as tall. Okay, so this is two times three. Two times three. Twice as tall. Multiplies the y. What does this do? What does this x minus one do? Moves it one to the right. Very good. And what does this plus two on the end do? Two. Up two. Up two. So there's a lot to do here. So I'm going to go in PEMDAS order. I'm going to start in my parentheses. I'm going to do that first. Then I'll multiply. And then last I will add. Okay? I'm going to do it in three steps. If you can combine a couple of them, that's fine. I'm not going to try. I'm going to just do it regular. Here we go. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is take my original picture, the original picture, and move everything, oops, move everything right one. So instead of this point being at negative two, it's going to be at negative one. There's my triangle. And then I'll have my semicircle. And then I'll have my trapezoid. Nothing tricky about that. Do not let that confuse you in any way, shape, or form. You're just moving it what moving each shape one unit to the right. So once you get the first one drawn, it's easy. Just keep going with the picture. So that takes care of this. Now twice as tall. Twice as tall. That's easy. How tall is this triangle? So now it's going to be four. I'm not moving it. I'm not doing anything except stretching it. This is this right here. Now how tall is my semicircle? So it will become two. And my 
this was not very good, but I think that trapezoid is down one. So it is going to end up being down two. I'm going to erase my original. You don't have to. Use different colors and a highlighter or something like that. But now I have taken care of right one and twice as tall. Okay, now what happens? Up two. Up two. So we're going to take every one of these points and simply lift it up two. And on graph paper, that's easy. You just take this point and you lift it up two. Just two boxes. Go up two boxes. And the same thing with this point. Each point you're going up two boxes. So my final answer is the green one because I took every point on my red one and just lifted it up to and connected the dots. Uh, he, he likes to leave it on. Mr. Hannaday does. Circulates the air. Sorry. Um, would it help you or move up to his desk? I, would it, I don't think it would be blowing directly on you again. All right, anybody have a question about that one? All right, believe it or not, there's one more transformation that we have to learn. So let's do a quick recap of what we know so far before we start adding one more thing to the list. So in, let, let's say, This gets, there can be so much. Where's this one? There, there isn't. This is my review. I'm just doing a quick review here. So I'm putting all the kinds of numbers into the problem that we can. So one at a time. What does this negative do? Upside down. This is just a review, a recap. What does this number right here do? Multiplies y. You're not going to have all this in the same problem, but this is everything we know so far. What does this negative do? Mm -hmm. Yep, it's across the x axis or across the y axis. What does this number do? That doesn't multiply the x. It divides the x. That's one of the hardest things to remember is this guy multiplies y, but this guy divides x. What does this number do right here? That one would go left four. If that were a minus, it would go right, right? And then what does this do? Up, right? Or down if it's negative. So those are all the things we know so far. We know how to handle plus and minus. We know how to handle negatives. And we know how to handle coefficients. The last thing we have to learn how to handle are the absolute value transformation. So if you look at 5a, you see it looks like this. And then if you look at 5B, you see it looks like this. Do you see the difference? Okay. This transformation, when it's the absolute value of the whole picture, 
everything's in the absolute value. We call that the bottoms up transformation. And the reason we call it bottoms up is because it literally takes everything on the bottom of the picture and folds it up. So this picture would look like this. That is the answer to this question because the only thing taking the absolute value does is folds the bottom part up. So the up part didn't change. Notice that? The up part stayed right the same. The only thing that changed is the part on the bottom came up. When you take the absolute value of the whole picture, Jameson, when you take the absolute value of the whole picture, it folds the bottom part up. That's the only change. What if there is no? Then there's no change. The only thing taking the absolute value of the whole picture does is take anything on the bottom and fold it up. It does not change any other part of the picture. Now, this one is a little bit more complicated, but it's still not hard. When you do this one, I want you to, this is the absolute value of just X. I want you to draw the right side of the picture. So I'm gonna say draw right side exactly as it is. So I'm gonna draw the right side of my picture there's my circle, there's my trapezoid. Draw the right side of the picture exactly the way it is. Then, mirror it on the left. In other words, take this and mirror it over here. So I'll have my circle, and my trapezoid over here. So I draw whatever is on the right of my picture. I draw it. Then, whatever I drew, I mirror it over to the left. Now you might be thinking, well wait a minute Mrs. Ford, what happened to the triangle in the original picture? gone, gone. To get the absolute value of just x, you draw the right and mirror it onto the left. Whatever was on the left is gone, replaced by that. So the doctrinal is like that, or do we get rid of the... That is the answer to that question. Right there, that's the answer to question B. Because I drew the right side of my picture and then I mirrored it onto the left. That's how you do this. This one, remember, is just bottom part comes up. All right, so let's see what we've got. Problem C. and move it up one. Now the order that you do this is important. We're gonna do the absolute value first. Now it is the absolute value of the whole thing. So remember, the absolute value of the whole thing is bottoms up, right? I'm gonna start by doing that. So bottoms up. So this is this. 
Remember when we take the absolute value of the whole thing? We just take whatever's on the bottom and fold it up. But I'm not done. What do I have to do now? So again, you're on your graph paper and you're just gonna take every one of your points here and you're gonna move it up one block. And you should get that red picture right there. okay with uh, this one? This was uh, C. C. You alright with C? Throw your hand up with a scratch in your head. Alright? Alright, what about D? What's happening in D? Now be careful. Be careful. This is the whole thing. So this is going to start out the same way that one did. We're going to start out bottoms up. Yep. We're going to start out with bottoms up. Oh, bottoms up. So there we go. That's my step one. That's my absolute value. Now, what does the negative out in front do to that? Upside down. Upside down. So you're going to take your bottoms up picture and you're going to move it bottoms down. Bottoms down. So the answer would be the red thing. couple more so do you want to pick one E F G or H F alright let's do F F says two so y equals two times g of the absolute value of x this is problem F okay we're doing F now Yeah, because we, we're trying, we only have time to do a couple more. So we're going to do F. Alright, so yes. So first thing I'm going to do is take my original picture. I'm going to draw the right side exactly as it is. Here's the right side. I'm not making any changes. I'm just drawing the right side of my picture. And then I will mirror it over here to this side. So I'm going to have my semicircle and my trapezoid over here. That is this right here. Now I'm going to multiply the y's. So everything is going to be twice as tall. So everything I have is one tall. So now it's all going to be two. So my semicircles are two. My trapezoids are two. And of course, that's on both sides. is the red thing. All right, one more. You want to do E, G, or H? H. H. All right, H says negative G 
G of the absolute value. Just place it on the right hand. So first we do this part right here, which says whatever was on the right. Draw it on the left. Okay, so remember the absolute value of x, the inside absolute value. So take your right side and draw it on your left side. Now what does that do? Make it upside down. Make it upside down. So everything is just going to flip upside down. So the trapezoid is going to come up. It's not changing size. It's just coming up. And the circle is going to come down. And of course, that's happening on both sides. So the green would be the answer to the question. Okay? So we've got a lot of stuff to keep track of. But that takes care of that. Uh, make sure that tomorrow you have a calculator with you because we're going to need a graphing calculator tomorrow. Because we're going to be doing some graphing. Friday? Or Friday, yeah, whenever it is. Yeah. <laughs>
This is a hard edit though. It was taped in like what's the name or something. Oh, yeah. oh, that's that's taped in person. Well, even if he does, if he does, yeah. 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 Did you know what's the name, sir? I really have a lot of right now, and I really don't know. It's probably done, too. Go ahead and go I'm not even like that. Remember, I have one. I don't even know if that. That one thing where we did the passing. Yeah. But she said, oh, you guys are trying to do medical. Thank you. 